hello you and thanks for watching welcome back here's me again with what I'm gonna call now episode 9 I know I, I uh, promised last time that I will uh, tackle a couple of buzzwords uh, and I changed my mind in the meantime um, and I'll tell you why um, not because I didn't enjoy half of the research I've done for for those bits but it's just like this last week I've seen that much of mindfulness and awareness that almost wore it worn it down for me so I'm not gonna talk about them there's something else that I'm gonna um, share with you so I hope, just bear with me here, I'm sort of going to be jumping through three different um, topics on, on essentially on coping and what we tend to do, <laughs> um, mostly um, involuntarily, we don't, we don't, perhaps we never look at it that way, but um, earlier today, I had to I had to put together something for one of my units and um, there was like a set of questions um, like nine different questions and the idea was pick one and um, let it flow go nuts about it just just um, give us a um, an insight into your brain as a person and and what does it do for you? And one of the topics um, which I sort of gravitated towards was, um, because in my mind it felt like an easy answer, um, it was all about um, therapy and counseling and things like that. Um, and as I was trying to um, sort of shuffle my mind and, and throw things together for that particular assignment, I kept going back to the rest of the questions and there was one of them in particular that I sort of glanced through a um, few times and I thought well this is interesting now um, and you know why it was interesting because the topic of the question was um, what are your avoidance behaviors um, if you looked at them and if you could um, uh, out, I don't know talk about them uh, or outline them uh, as to why do you think that they're good for you because avoidance is um, in, in, in psychology or counseling it's a it's a maladaptive type of um, mechanism as in there's obviously the, the uh, avoidance of danger and threats and, and the legitimate avoidance that we um, uh, uh, rely on for our, our minds our bodies to, to react to and, and have in place but then there's the avoidance as the maladaptive behavior and usually what that is uh, sometimes it's equal to um, escaping or being being in a situation where instead of instead of dealing with it um, or or instead of taking it as it comes we tend to avoid it uh, whatever that it is so the question was what are your mind <laughs> um, avoiding mechanisms that I can realize that I'm deploying lately and what would I change about them so <laughs> I decided to drop the first question and and had a bit of, of, a, of, a, of a thought as to how do I avoid situations? What it is that I do? And here's, here's the little bit of 
insight that I arrived to. And again, so we're not talking about the threat or fear or anything like that. We're talking about um, resistance. Yeah, we're talking about avoidance, escaping, that, that kind of, um, I don't want to talk about it kind of thing. Uh, but more to it, you know, like um, it's not just I don't want to talk about it or saying that out loud to people. Sometimes it, it, it we put ourselves across in different, um, engaging different types of behaviors that literally um, someone else calls us out on them. And it's kind of a shock because we we wouldn't have looked at it that way or even in our little uh, machinery here we tend to uh, give meaning and rationalize what we do and why we do it so thinking of it here's my two bobs discovery <laughs> about myself and hopefully um, you'd be um, some of you um, maybe will be relating to this and what I do, because I'd like to think of myself as a clever cookie, I analyze things. I, and, that, and that's not the bad part. Um, I analyze things, I analyze the information, I analyze the situation that I'm in based on, based on two things. And, and we usually do this based on the factual information at hand and on the emotional charge that that situation um, gives me or or sort of um, it, it releases uh, for me and this is where the this is where the avoidance starts shaping because there's nothing wrong with analyzing and there's nothing wrong with feeling and emotions but the moment you start well the moment I start, um, overthinking where th that that's where I fall into this trap of of putting together the factual information but not just that because I tend to also take into account what is not said and what is otherwise um, maybe implied, um, maybe not at all implied and just my perception of things. So I, I gather all of these things about a situation and unfortunately, um, I figured out that um, up until recently, mind you, I do this quite often. I overthink it and then I skip few steps in advance. I go three steps, well, um, four, five, six, <laughs> doesn't have to be three, even one is enough to sabotage the whole thing. So I just skip ahead and take a decision at a point in time that hasn't happened yet. So take sorry i take a decision i make a decision based on my overthinking and the additional steps um, that lead me to a scenario at a point in time that hasn't happened yet and the sad part about it is that like any of us i also have um um, bad experiences that, that happen in my life and, and um, they usually stick with you in terms of emotional charge and, and that's the part that um, you'd be trying to avoid because well which same person does dive head first into a situation that they already know they burnt themselves with maybe a few times so the trouble here is the trouble is not the bad experience not 
recalling that, not even the overthinking. The trouble here is the skipping ahead to a scenario that hasn't happened yet. And that's kind of sad because I, 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 I tend to do this and, and I justify it to myself because I'm thinking, well, it, it will save me time that I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. So you know what? Let's just mm, cut it short. But the reality is that skipping those steps and bear with me here, skipping those, it's not the overthinking and it's not the past experience that, that draws the avoidance. What happens is the escape plan comes about when that projection of that, that scenario in the future that has not happened yet but happens in, in my thinking, um, in my mind, which I think I told you before that our mind keeps uh, playing tricks on us, that it, 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 what I do to myself um, and, and avoiding this or, or skipping ahead and taking a decision on a scenario that has not happened yet, it does me um, a huge uh, detriment. And that is, um, I'm literally overriding, like wiping out any possibility, any probability for that situation or, or that person to actually have the chance to prove me wrong, to have the chance to prove my experience wrong, to prove my overthinking wrong, because at that point in the um, projected scenario, I'm taking a decision without giving them the chance um, to be who they are now. Um, remember what I also said in, in the previous video that, uh, and, and widely accepted, we change, we always change. Um, if I talked to you yesterday, between yesterday and today, you've, you've, um, you've changed, you've transformed. There are certain things about you um, that, that, by the interaction, purely by the thoughts that were triggered by you and I talking. Um, and, and this is what causes the trouble because I, it, it just dawned on me that I do that quite frequently. Um, I sort of because of, of some sort of a freakish default setting of finding solutions. And in time, this, this sort of, I don't know, um, I, I sort of feel kind of drawn towards time and, and making the most out of it and, and authenticity or genuineness, if you'd like, or not just freaking wasting time, anyone's time, mind you, then, then there's a simple, simple algorithm that happens in, in that kind of scenario projecting and out of the, uh, out of the projections that I come up with, then the decision ends up being avoidance or escape. So, um, without a drama <laughs> or without a scene or anything like that it's just like um, I give up really that's what it is I actually give up uh, when I arrive to some algorithm that um, uh, it's it's not um, whatever it is that I mean it's not proving me wrong um, in a good way, in a very good way.
Um, so, so <laughs> I don't know if this helps you in any way, shape or form, um, but giving up on that possibility, on that, even if it is just a small statistical probability that someone or something may surprise you, may, um, in, in, a, in an awesomely good way, may prove you wrong, um, despite patterns, despite past, despite overthinking, um, people change and, and um, you have to, um, I guess, um, this is where I sort of turn it around and, and trying to um, give up without the projecting scenario, sort of just give as many chances as possible and stop uh, looking at a future scenario and just look at right here, right now. Right here, right now is our time spent the best it can be or we're just wasting it. So I hope you get something out of it. <laughs> um, I actually wrote about this um, in a probably much more intelligible way um, on my website. Uh, have a bit of a look if you feel like it. It's um, livingbygabby.studio um, and I shall see you next time without any promises of what's going to be like. I'm just going to surprise you. I'm going to surprise me as well. <laughs> okay, no more overthinking and stop projecting scenarios that haven't happened yet. Give people a chance, another chance, and let them surprise you in a good way. Thank you. I'm Gabriela and I shall talk to you next time. Bye for now.